Hey, what's up guys? Embrace the suck, day five. Today, I was feeling like a lazy ass and did not want to walk to the gym or run or whatever. So thought about driving, but said, nope, you know what? Forced myself just to walk. Uh, it's good to get outside, get some fresh air and it gives me an opportunity to just kind of check in with you and make this video. So what I want to talk about today is if something in your life that sucks is your finances, how I think you should get started to face the inevitable, right? The reason why I call it the inevitable is because you can only hide so long that you are not doing well with your finances before it starts to show up in other areas of your life, right? So a lot of young people have a ton of student loans, credit card debt, different things like that. They want to buy a house and they're, so let's say in California, like I am, and California is absolutely ridiculous to purchase a home in most areas for most people, unless you're high income, right? So it's like, okay, people feel stuck. They don't know where to start and they're not sure what they should be doing and in what order. So what I want to do is just start with giving you the first steps and then sort of walk through these things so that if you want to embrace the suck when it comes to your finances, you can do one little thing each day and over time you'll build up the habits, behaviors, and the things you need to do so that you end up in a good place. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I work with a lot of people in their 50s and 60s when it comes to retirement planning. And so the way I see it is almost like I'm seeing a glimpse into the future, right? If you're in your 20s, 30s, and 40s, I can look at your situation now and see, okay, are you doing the right things to end up in a good place in your 50s and 60s so that you can be financially independent and not have to work? you know, forever till the day you die someday. And there's some very specific things that I've seen older folks do that younger folks today are not quite doing, you know, the way they should be doing or as much as some of these older folks did back in the day. Um, we have such a lifestyle of just spending and living for today <clears throat> that a lot of young people I speak to, they just have no concept of the future and they just think it's somehow gonna all work out. And sometimes that's the case, but you know, sometimes you have wealthy parents who are gonna give you some money, but many times that's not the case. And if you don't fix it for yourself, then no one else is gonna fix it for you, okay? So, and, it, and let me tell you, it's really sad. It's really sad when I see somebody that's 65, 68 years old and just doesn't have enough money to live. And now they're looking at getting a roommate, moving out of the country, doing all these different things because they either couldn't find the extra money to save or they just chose not to do it and chose not and chose to live for the moment versus planning for the long term okay so the first step and this is what i talked about yesterday when i did my live training for my retiree group is you want to get a realistic understanding of what you're actually spending like if you're saving a bunch of money right now and you're doing a good job with this it's probably not as important to you but if you're struggling to save, if you're struggling to get ahead, if you don't have at least three to six months worth of your uh, what you need to survive on, so what you need to spend to live of your expenses, if you don't have that saved up and put to the side, then this is definitely something you wanna do, okay? First thing I would say is get hooked up to some sort of expense tracking software. So you can use mint.com or something like that. There's another one called You Need a Budget. That one's pretty good. I think it costs 30 bucks a year for that, but a lot of people like it. Just something to wear your expenses are being tracked, okay? And I think even some bank accounts have this, so you don't wanna get hooked up online somewhere there. And then, once you hook that up, don't look at the results yet. Sit down, grab a piece of paper, just a yellow pad, nothing fancy, and write down what you think all of your expenses are monthly. Include your rent, your mortgage, whatever it is, whatever you think you spent on food, whatever you think you spent on all your bills, and then once you get all that listed out and total it up, then compare what is is uh, being spent in mint right because mint's gonna go to your checking account so that should unless you use all cash that should honestly uh give you a realistic idea of what you're spending every single month and then compare that to what you wrote down if they don't match up and what you wrote down makes it seem like you should have some extra money that you could, you could be saving and investing then there's a problem so we need to uh, uh, dive in and figure out, okay, where are you overspending? Is it on food? Is it on going out? Is it on alcohol? Is it on toys? Is it on Amazon? Is it at Target? Whatever that is, we gotta get to the root of the problem where the overspending is, okay? So that's the first thing I would say to do. Hook up to something like mint.com, 
and then do write down all your expenses and let's see if you are living in reality with what you think you're spending versus what you actually are. Uh, and then from there, we can figure out, okay, what's the next step um, and where can we find some extra money that we can put aside and save for a rainy day, all right? That's, what, that's all I got for you guys today. About to go into the gym. Have a good one, guys, and see you next time.